Hi, um, good morning, afternoon, evening, whenever you're turning on this wonderful film. Let me show you what we've got here. This is The Warm Embrace. I'm Belinda, of Ruth and Belinda. This is one of my designs. Um, I call it a design, but actually it's a strip with a frill. But how beautifully, wonderfully it works. Do you not think? I think this is rather fun. Okay, let me show you close up. This is in our thick wool. If you can see, thick wool. This is 100% British wool. This is grown in Devon. This is Exmoor Shorthorn Blueface Leicester. Beautifully thick. Just Feels lovely. For everyday wear, round your shoulders. Um, the frill is in silky. Um, just takes one silky. So one thick wool. Again, it's British wool. Silky is 80% alpaca, Peruvian alpaca, 20% silk. Very, very soft. I cannot explain how soft this is. It is just beautiful to touch, beautiful to wear, and, and falls so beautifully because of the silk. As you can see, it's got, I I'll just do a little spin. Oh, like a little, like a little doll. There you go, little doll. So this is, this is the warm embrace. Let me just talk you through. Before I do, let me just explain. These are, uh, this is, but we do sell lots. Um, um, shawl pins, and they are, this is made of mango wood, we also have them made in rosewood, we have squares and ovals and hearts, please look on our needles and pins page to check that out, they are just gorgeous, beautifully made, as you can see, each one is unique, and they are just, oh that's lovely, because look, can you see, it's got a lighter, a lighter design, so everyone is slightly different, um, can you see? There, there you go. And they just, they're great fun. Because you can also wear them. Like, ah, I'm going to do it. But you can also, let me just show you. I'm going to just do a little demonstration. You can also wear it in your hair. So I was just going to show you how you can do this. So, I may get this completely wrong and it may all fall down. So bear with me a second. But, can you see? Have I done it right? Um, so you can do something like that, which is quite fun. Anyway, I think you need a band first, but anyway. Okay, so let me just talk you through how this goes. So you cast on here. Absolutely peasy. Cast on ten stitches. Okay? And every row, you knit. Knit, 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 Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going. To the end. And at the end, you probably have about that much yarn. Meter? Wool? Sorry, it's not yarn. Generic term yarn. Here you go, you've got about that much left. Cast off, sewing edges, Bob's your uncle. Easy, really easy. Beginning, beginning to knit. Just, that's how you are taught, aren't you? When you learn, when you first begin, you just want to knit a very simple scarf that's in garter stitch that you can wear and say to all your buddies and friends and relatives and comrades and allies and whatnot, I can knit. So there you go, first thing. Then comes a little bit more complex bit, but equally easy. We have this rather fun frill. Okay, now we want to encourage people who don't knit to knit, people who have knitted for a while to not feel that they've got to knit something so easy, and for people experienced knitters to knit quickly and have something delicious to give away or to wear for themselves. So hopefully we're covering all sorts of bases, but for, for people who want to begin the journey, this is actually quite easy to do. Um, and don't panic. Don't. I always think it's about being brave, brave enough to actually, if you make a mistake, to just pull it back and start again. I mean, I do that endlessly when I'm actually designing. I, I will drop a stitch sometimes in a lace pattern and I'll pull it back and think, oh, goodness me, Belinda, here we go again. Just do it. It's fine. You'll get there. It's practice. Nobody can do it overnight. It, you know, learning anything takes practice. Don't think you're just going to be able to cast on ten and knit, you know, an Eiffel Tower. Uh, uh you know it's deluding you you're deluding yourself it's not going to happen some people do although so. um but you know practice patience have fun it's about having fun and enjoying it enjoying it because it's such delicious yarn that's what we always find but actually even if you're knitting something very simple that if you're using exquisite and very delicious um, yarn, it kind of, and, and yarn that has kind of provenance if it comes from the UK, it's all much nicer. But sometimes we can't get um, some of our yarn from 
the UK just because we can't get it soft enough and we want it to be delicious so we do have a broker who finds it for us um, finds the fleece and we get some of it spun here in Devon and in the UK um, we're working with a mill in Harrogate and working with a mill in Devon and so that's great fun it's really nice and going to the mills are just such fun um, and just these huge goat machines very noisy hive of industry go go if you ever go you know you want to go and see how it's all made it's you always think you know it's a bit like anything really you don't realize actually what's involved all the scouring and the combing and the this and the that and the and it spins all on these fantastic cones it is just good fun so check that out go and go and see if you can visit a mill a wool mill um, so here we go so what you've got here you've knitted this long long strip and now what you need to do is as you can see it's quite long can you see that it's actually quite big you're never going to get all these stitches on one knitting needle so what you'd need is circular needles now circular needles have are uh, are uh, needles with wire and then another needle at the end so it's for people who want to knit in the round if that makes sense where you're joining the yarn and the wool and going round and round and round. So you're making tubes because you're literally just going round and round in circles. Now, on this one, you would definitely need a circular needle, but you don't need knit in a circle. You knit backwards and forwards as you would norm normally on, as if you were having a pair of normal straight needles. So you pick up all along this edge, as you can see, 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 along here, you pick up and knit at the same time. Now I don't actually have any needles here but I do have my shawl pin. So let's <laughs> crazily use this as a needle and I'll just show you what I mean. So what you've got here is you pick up, uh, let me do it this way, you pick up here and you knit and you make a stitch. You pick up and knit and you make a stitch. Can you see here they are holes? Can you see these holes? So you pick up and knit all along here until you've got your needle, your circular needle, running all the way along here, all the way, 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 till you've got all those, all those stitches on this. And then what you do is you follow the pattern card. But I'll just show you very, very briefly here how this is done. So this is these lovely flares. This is here yarn overs. Now yarn overs make stitches. What you're doing is you're bringing the yarn from the front over the needle and what you do is you're literally making a loop as if you're, and I'm not knitting it, you literally make a loop over and then you keep knitting, you make a loop. That's what those are. They're loops. Loops. And then on the other way around, when you're going back, when you're doing the purl stitch, because this is going knit and then because it's stocking stitch, you're doing a purl row on the back way, if that makes sense knit one way, purl the other. You're eating up the two, can you see here, here and here. These would be here stitches, the loops, but they've made holes. So what you do is you knit, you purl them, apologies, you purl them. So what you're doing incrementally, you're getting bigger and bigger and bigger because you do that every row. So if you can see here, you've got, if I'm right, you've got knit three, yarn over, knit three, yarn over, purl three, yarn over, knit three, yarn over, purl three, yarn over, knit three, yarn over, purl three. And you keep doing that all the way. And on the way back, then what you're doing here is because you're having this is stocking stitch, but it's the reverse stocking stitch, if that makes sense. So then you have here, you're then doing a purl row. You then, then what you're doing is you're purling the loop the three stitches and the loop so that's five and you keep going the next time you're doing seven the next time you're doing nine the next time eleven the next time thirteen and so on and so on and so on until you have about three meters of yarn left to cast off now please 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 cast off loosely as you can see it really makes a difference to your work um, if you think that you're casting off too tightly a little trick go up a needle size um, so if you're knitting on a size 6 go up to a size 7 4 go up to a size 5 so not terribly difficult to do and then when you're done um, voila finished 
<clears throat> what I do suggest, um, which is actually probably worth doing for all our stuff, is to block it. <clears throat> don't get, excuse me, don't get so panicked about what blocking is. Um, blocking is shoving in some water, <laughs> doing this, giving me a good old rinse out. Um, pulling this, it's about pulling in things into shape. That's what blocking is, essentially, is about pulling so you keep the shape, so you get the shape. Particularly when you're using very, very thin yarn. Um, um, yeah, when you're using almost lace weight yarn, you'll find that it's even more important to do it because you don't actually see the pattern. It will just look like one big saggy old mess of noodly spaghetti. And when you start actually blocking it and pulling it out, you then can see the intricate shapes and designs and motifs, which are so exquisite in lace shawls. Um, but equally important to do it for this sort of thing. So again, give it a big squish, give it a little thing in water, lay it out either on a towel um, in any room in your house, preferably where there is not a thoroughfare for people to stand on it, and it should look rather like this, which is just rather nice little, little fluffy frills, but not too much, not too frilly. They're just rather nice. So they almost look, actually, now looking at this, it looks like architecture, doesn't it? Does that make it looks almost like sort of almost doors to old buildings, like old churches or chapels or synagogues or something. Mosques. I don't know. Anyway, look, I thought those were very warm, lovely to wear, really quite delicious. Have a play. You could really kind of... Can you feel how lovely that is? I don't... I, I mean, I, it just is extraordinarily is, soft and lovely. This is how it's all thick wool. This is how you'll... When you buy some, you'll get a great big, fat, delicious ball like this. And this is what this is. This is what you'll be knitting, this long strip in. And as you can see, I don't know if you can really feel how delicious that is. It's very, very soft and puffy, full of air. And it's one ply. And it comes in the skein. This great big hank. And you will have two knots. One knot there. And one knot there. So just chop those. Find your end, get someone you love, or someone you want to love, or someone who want you want to yes, you want them to fall in love with you, or whatever. Make up friends, perhaps, so they stand very close to you, and you can have a long chat, and they can wind it into a lovely ball. When you have a big ball of this lovely yarn, keep it away from your cats and your dogs, and your mice and your gerbils and your whatever else, and uh, there you will have your beautiful uh, warm embrace.